Well, on that note, uh, this is a question that has come up a number of times throughout the course of you giving these webcasts, and in particular after the Monday broadcast of the Policy Committee. Uh, the question is on your focus on the Queen of England as an enemy. And we've, I mean, what we published recently on the bailout and the bail-in pointing to the quadrillions of dollars in derivatives that would be uh, exacted uh, from the population, uh, it's clear that this will amount to genocide. And you posed the question earlier this week, what organization has the capability, uh, the will, and the apparatus to achieve that drastic a population reduction, to achieve the kind of population reduction that would be achieved in the event of, for example, Dodd-Frank being going into effect. And uh, it's interesting because there was an answer to your question, but it was given on November 2009, uh, the diamond anniversary of the Commonwealth where the Queen herself said that the Commonwealth's strength lies as much in people as it does in values. That few other global organizations can boast the same rich diversity of humankind and yet also such a commonality of spirit. She says it's not enough to look within the boundaries of the Commonwealth that in a world where political, economic, and environmental problems and opportunities cross continents, the Commonwealth will also need to prove its relevance beyond its own borders and develop a truly global perspective. Now, to say that that's an objective of the Commonwealth is sort of uh, putting the horse in front of the cart because it's already well established. And uh, the Commonwealth, for, just for the record, what, well, what, what is controlled by uh, Her Majesty, the Queen of England, is uh, 54 nations, uh, about a third of the global landscape from the Caribbean to South America to Africa, uh, even to Ant Antarctica. Uh, and about a third of the population is uh, controlled under the Queen of England. She is absolute sovereign over 16 countries. Uh, she controls a significant amount of the raw material resources of the planet Earth. Uh, I believe it is well over $1 trillion in physical assets, um, the control over agriculture, uh, the city of London itself, uh, the control uh, over terrorism out of Londonistan, as it is, uh, as it is known to some who are in the know. I, I just want to say that on, on the issue of London controlling terrorism, a number of states filed complaints as of 2000, including Egypt, Israel, France, Algeria, Peru, Turkey, Germany, Libya, Nigeria, Yemen, and Russia, uh, filing official diplomatic complaints against the city of London for harboring terrorists. Um, and Executive Intelligence Review, which you founded, has written chapter and verse on the uh, on the British control over the drug trade in the very famous publication Dope Incorporated, uh, which which it should be notable. Uh, some people, when their grandmother dies, they're asked to take care of her garden, you know, her roses. Uh, when Queen Victoria died, Queen Elizabeth's grandmother, she, well, she and her predecessors were instructed to take care of the poppy gardens. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we're pulling together a full dossier on all of the arms of the British 
monarchy, uh, but merely to state the issue of control uh, does not does not prove the case fundamentally. It's not just the control, but the intent in the control over this territory, these people, uh, and these very nasty uh, terror and other uh, apparatuses. So uh, you have the very famous quotes on the record by the monarchy itself, by Prince Philip, who using the language of the, of the monarchy, who is very fond of breeding, uh, breeding animals, Prince Philip is the sire to Queen Elizabeth's bitch. So, uh, in uh, the, the quotes on the record, you have from 1988, Prince Philip, founder of the World Wildlife Fund, along with the card-carrying member of the Nazi party, Prince Bernard uh, of, of the Netherlands. Uh, but Philip told a German press agency in 1988, in the event I am reborn, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to solve overpopulation. Uh, he also said uh, at a different time, uh, you cannot keep a bigger flock of sheep than you are capable of feeding. In other words, conservation may involve culling in order to keep a balance between the relative numbers in each species within any particular habitat. I realize this is a very touchy subject, but the fact remains that mankind is part of the living world. And there are other other notable quotes, uh, including from uh, John Schellenuber, the head of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Research, uh, who is also a commander of the most excellent order uh, of the British Empire. Uh, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth. Uh, he's also a longtime collaborator of President Obama's uh, science and technology advisor, John Holdren. And he is on the record uh, declaring that the carrying capacity of the planet is one billion persons or below. So you have these quotes on, on the record uh, by the monarchy and their subordinates. Um, so I would like you to answer this question, though, in as plain terms as you can. Why the focus on the queen, and what is being missed uh, when people uh, focus on a different target other than the British queen uh, and the royal, uh, the royal house of Windsor as it stands? Well, I think you can scrap most of that stuff, because if you want to get the real business, you know, you have to look back a little more generally at the course of human history. Uh, the problem has been, and the key pivot, it came in the period of the uh, Nicholas Acuza. That was the key point, where the turning point, where the issue became defined by Acuza's role. Now, Acuza's role is famous because he personally let set forth the program of going across the oceans from Europe and adjoining areas in order to free man from, de from despair, from destruction. So what, you've been having, what we had in this long period was a period beginning before the Roman Empire of rotten, of pure evil. So you don't have to find cases to prove the evil. The evil is genetic. It's intrinsic to the European system in particular and other parts of the world. It's not because someone's a criminal that, you know, that commits a crime that they're a criminal. First they become a criminal, then they commit the crime. That's the way it works in empires. Now along came Nicholas Okuza, who died in the process of this effort, whose campaign was to get people out of Europe and out of other parts of the world that are troublesome in order to cr get across the great oceans to build a society which will save humanity 
from what was going on in Asia and Africa. There's the evil. The culture of Europe was the root of the evil. Not some bad people. The culture itself was saturated with this thing. The Roman Empire, the Venetian system, the Dutch system, the British offshoot of the Dutch system. This is the evil. Their policies are the evil. So what happened? What changed this? What changed was what became the founding of what became the United States, which was organized by people from just before the beginning of the 17th century. And we saw it, the key case to look at is the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was the difference. It was, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was a brilliant institution, more brilliant than the 18th century United States or Americas, because it had been crushed at the end of that, of that century, the 17th century. We tried, with Benjamin Franklin and other, we began to rebuild elements of what had been established under the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was more advanced in science and in e economics than the whole damn British Empire. And the British Empire then was the Dutch Empire. Yeah? And that's why the British-Dutch relationship, because they're, they're sort of a, something dirty, you know, they, they mate together or something like that, you know, things you would like to talk about. So the problem is that inside the European system, and as a result of the European system's corruption of the American system, hmm, which has happened, Andy Jackson, for example. Andy Jackson, a real piece of scum. Pure scum. And owned by British banks with a major institution sitting on, around New York City and Boston, of all places. So we have been having a war inside the United States itself between the British influence from the outside and our own interest. Very few presidents of the United States have been really true patriots. Most of the governments of the United States have been corrupt, corrupted by their association with the British in particular. Wall Street, New York City, Boston are centers of sin and evil. And I know it personally. I've been there. So the, the problem has to be defined differently. The point is that we in the United States have a responsibility to resurrect that which we had once accomplished, first in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and second what we did in creating the United States. The United States institution, intellectually, was a, one of the greatest institutions that civilization has ever known. But then it was crushed by the British, by the British Empire. Now the British Empire is not something that's British. The British Empire is an empire. And what you have, you, people say, well, they are inf influence other things. No, 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 no. They are the thing. The others are, the, are simply branches of the same thing. That's Blair. What's Blair? Blair's nothing, we should call him a whore. That's a good thing to call him. But he's proud of it. He's proud of it. He sits in New York, he's in, the, uh, in Chicago a good deal of the time, under this current non-president we have. And he's one of the most evil men in declarations on the planet. He's a mass murderer. He's worse than Adolf Hitler in, his, in Hitler's initial policy of genocide. He's worse, much worse. He's worse than Hitler. And he's the controller and advisor of the current president of the United States. So therefore, you've got to look at this thing differently. The time has come when we realize that we once had a, a great achievement in the time of Nicholas Acuza, where an intention was there which was prepared to deal with these problems, and it was crushed, and it crawled out of the dust again, and was crushed again. Our greatest presidents were murdered by them, by the imperial force. And people are critical of the United States. They, 
They can't criticize the United States to me unless you're American. Because everybody else has been wrong. Not wrong because they were born wrong or because they erred. They're wrong because the system, the European system, was rotten ever since the Roman Empire and earlier. We in the United States have a sacred trust to be what we were intended to become. And we failed in our performance so far. That's the way to look at this thing. Now, there are specific things at these, at these times which you would, would bring into, into play for discussion on this question. What must we do? What must we as the United States do? What is our responsibility? We're not going to play penny any games. We're not worried about petty issues, all these kinds of silly things. We realize there has to be a fundamental change in the world outlook throughout Europe, throughout Asia, throughout Africa. They don't have any great uh, talent in terms of morality. The morality of Africa among Africans is horrible. It's unbelievable. Are you going to say Africa is virtuous? Huh? And that's the case. That's the case of nations all around the world. The human species is now on the edge of thermonuclear war. Thermonuclear war is extinction warfare. It takes you about an hour and a half to cause the extinction of most of the people of the planet. Maybe you can do better and get it done in a few minutes. But th what the problem is we face, it, we have to face a problem of mankind. Mankind created the United States and tried to create some other states in the Americas. And there were other parts of the world that struggled to deal with the evil that was dominant in Europe and Asia, dominant huh, in Africa. But we have the primary responsibility, we in the United States. And we should be very careful about criticizing people in a way which suggests a wholly than our, the new attitude. We're all guilty, in a sense, because we haven't done what had to be done. And we in the United States are the most guilty at all because we were the best qualified to do the job. We failed on the job. And when the human species depends upon your doing the job for much of the world, you're not going to tolerate yourself, are you, under those circumstances where you fail? And we have to understand history. We have to understand what the facts of history are. But most people in the United States are totally ignorant of the facts of history. They don't know a damn thing about history. They know about facts. But facts are just stories. And anybody can make up stories. The stories may be true, but maybe they leave something out that is wrong. So that our point is we cannot sit and criticize. We have to take responsibility for ending that which should not exist. Why? Because we're better. Why are we better? Because we inherited something from people like Nicholas Okuza.